happens, man. But when you talk about an impact, when you talk about putting butts in seats, eyeballs on screens, merchandise flying out the window, and to have LeBron James come join you and say his last one or two seasons, the math maths for me, man. I'm going with the math. I'm, I'm picking. And we back on once again, baby, with Unc and Chico. The pregame show and Big Dog Chico checking in to you right now. We're on the heels of the NBA Finals. We got Jalen Brown as the NBA Finals MVP after they defeated the Dallas Mavericks, of course. You predicted it. You said the Celtics was going to win. I, I thought the Mavs was somehow was going to be able to pull it out. but Man, damn. look, Chico, I don't even want to take credit for it, man, because the thing is, I wanted like Kyrie to get one right. So, I, so like I told uh, Coach Sapp on Wednesday was warm, I said, my heart wants the Dallas Mavericks. I said, man, but my basketball IQ, like Boston, just a better team. They, you know, outside Luka and 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 Kyrie, you really can't even just name folks. When you get past Brown and Tatum, you got Porzingis, you got Drew, you got old man uh, 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 Al Horford Al, Al, yep. out there still playing. So they got they got a team, man. So hats off to them. Uh, one of my critiques. So I got to tell you this, big dog. One of my critiques in that in the post final celebration, I think Tatum was just trying too hard, man. He was trying, oh yeah, trying to make the moment, man. You can't make the moment <laughs> happen. Just let it happen. He, he they, I saw a meme where he was recreating. He did this scene. He did the Kobe. He did the uh, Kevin yeah, Garnett. Yeah. He did all of them. <laughs> yeah, he was. Like, you got to make one for yourself, dog. Yeah, man, just just react naturally. Like he was, he was wanting that moment that was gonna get replayed and replayed. <laughs> man, well, that's to him. Uh, I did think, I did think that uh, Brown was the right choice for MVP, man. Uh, I, although Tatum had some stats there at the end that kind of propelled him forward, I think what Brown did in key moments of key games in the final series, just he was he was Finals MVP for me. Well. He I think they're saying he was the one of the only ones that have led his team in points, rebounds, and assists, but uh, one of the only ones who didn't win the MVP after doing that. But I think it was because of the up and downness of of the of the way he played throughout the series and the consistency of what Jalen Brown did, uh, plus his defense also, which put him over the top. Hey man, they you know, you know they're trying to figure out what they're gonna do with Chuck and Kenny and Ernie. They just need to call us up because you just said it perfectly. That's exactly <laughs> what it was. At the end of the day, Taylor might have had better aggregate stats. But yeah. there were some moments during some of those games he disappeared, whereas Jalen Brown was just consistent every single game, moment of the game. He was there, and Tatum was like, okay, big moment here, disappear 10 minutes. Big game right. here, play the next game. So I'm, I'm going to go – I'm not going to be the stat guy. I'm going to be the impact guy. And I think Jalen Brown – had the biggest impact in that finals for the Celtics. Exactly. Uh, and you saw how he was talking about going at Luka and denying Luka the ball. You know, all of that stuff plays into the MVP factor um, with him, you know, his defensive prowess against Luka Doncic. And uh, Kyrie just happened to be off throughout the season, had one good game uh, that, that, that last game. But most of the series, he was just off surprisingly. And the other guys, of course, weren't there to score. You know, you had Luca and Kyrie there to score. So uh, probably some additions to be made for the Dallas Mavericks team. Uh, yeah. Not to go too far off, but I've been seeing uh, memes or, or pictures with LeBron joining the Mavericks <laughs> because they are rumored to draft Bronny if the Lakers pass on him because of the connection with the GM there and uh, Rich Paul, who is, the, of course, the agent, for clutch sports, LeBron James, and of course, who will be representing Bernie James. So, how do you see that playing out in the draft? Let's go to Bernie James right quick. How do you see that, that playing out in the draft? Should he be drafted? Is he an NBA player from what you've seen? And for, let's go to, we, we'll look at it from a, a business standpoint too. As an owner, would you look to draft him? Oh my God, you just hit it right there at the park. As a owner, absolutely. Because as a owner, I'm paying these bills. As an owner, I got to look at the expense side and the revenue side. And let me let, look. Let's just be clear. This won't be the first draft in NBA history where somebody has picked somebody that wasn't better or worse than the people after them. There was people got picked in front of Michael Jordan. Like this, this happened. Right. You look at <laughs> jersey sales. You look at attention. You look at selling out arenas. You look at 
what it means that now LeBron going to want to come play for the same team that his son on, man, I'm absolutely picking Brian. <laughs> so, so you, but let's, let's take it here. If you're in a top 10 pick or does that change if you're outside of, of the lottery? Do you, do you consider him if you're a top five pick or so? If I'm knowing what I'm knowing that Brian, that LeBron James senior wants to close out his career with his son, I don't care why I'm picking. The first pick I get, I'm mm. picking Bronny. I take the criticism. I take the hit because, again, I mean, Sam Bowie went before Michael Jordan. The league survived that. Look how many people went before uh, uh, or after Greg Odom. The league survived that. This stuff happens, man. But when you talk about an impact, when you talk about putting butts in seats, eyeballs on screens, merchandise flying out the window, and to have – LeBron James come join you and say his last one or two seasons. The math, math for me, man. I'm going with the math. I'm, I'm picking Bronny no matter what. I, I I I agree with you to a certain extent. If I'm like the Atlanta Hawks, right, and they have a chance to get that kid, uh, uh, the Alexander kid, I think from Australia, seven foot one, might be a, a KD type player, uh, projected to go number one. I might look at taking him and just building for my future. But I love what you're saying uh, from that standpoint because if LeBron James comes to your team, you're going to be an instant playoff team. Your your, your revenue sales going to be out the window. See, the game's going to be sold out. You know what? You uh, uh, you right. You right. Look, you you making uh, my point for me. I'm Let making me your this. point right now. Look, when my when my light bill do next month, I ain't thinking about the light bill three years from now. I'm thinking about the light bill next month. Bronny James is going to pay the light bill next month. Like man, bring him in here. Yeah, he lied. He'll hold, then, his, he'll, he'll hold his own and like and matter of fact, let's say he a bus and people just 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 tear him up every night. And you still come to watch. Yeah. <laughs> I don't if I lose, I don't lose. If I don't if I lose, I don't lose. You're right about that as an owner. You're right. Because Man, you know, let me tell you what it's similar to when you talk about risk reward. Two years ago, you know, 18 months ago. People were talking about Rick George and his decision to bring Coach Prime, uh, you know, and, and a lot of people would try to look at what Coach Prime accomplished in the SWAC as it not being proven. You and I know better. You know, when right. you go undefeated in conference and, and go to back, back to back conference championships, you can coach. But nevertheless, people were saying he wasn't proven. And so here comes Rick George taking this risk. I, I think it was a minimal risk because you got to look at the revenue side of things. Colorado, right. for a better part of a decade, have been losing games and losing money. The worst Coach Prime was going to do for you is just lose games. You're not going to lose money. So, <laughs> right. You know, revenue going to be up. Ticket sales going to be up. Merchandise going to be up. You're going to be on TV and magazine covers everywhere. And if you mess around and win a game, that's just gravy. So from a business risk standpoint, to me, it's the same thing like with Bronny James. You use your Atlanta example. Well, last time Atlanta won the Eastern Conference or Championship. Right. So, they, and then Atlanta three, is. They can go three more years without it. <laughs> <laughs> and Atlanta is Black Mecca also. So, yeah. you know, people going to come out. You're going to have Boosie on the sideline, BC yeah, going to fly the man. stands. Man, if I got people go big crazy. Dog, I'm Bronny, man. Because you're right. Because you're going to get LeBron James. It's like picking two and one. This is a, you know, once in a lifetime opportunity right here. Actually, really, there's nobody in the draft that you can say that's just a clear cut. You know, generational talent. They're trying mm -hmm. to hype up the Sar kid, but it's I don't see a real generational talent out there to you know, where like, you might say. Like, had we been talking a year ago, I I probably would have still picked Wimby over Bronny. But this year's draft class, exactly. I don't think there's. You know, when I look at the revenue side of things and, and the hype side of things, I don't think there's a player in this draft that would make me go like, ah, I might, I'm not, I might not better do this. I'm going Bronny, man. Going Bronny James, no, no matter where you're picking that. With all the question marks y'all got on him, I'm still going Bronny. No matter where you're picking that, I hear you. I hear you. Hey, that's no, not, Look, I know in this episode drop, they're going to be tearing me up in the comments. I don't care. You know what? But see, <laughs> we, we tried we tried to get eyeballs on screens, man. Bronny James is eyeballs. <laughs> 100%. I agree with that. Let, let me see uh, what the people in the chat agree with. Y'all let us know. Put your comments in the chat. Do y'all agree? Should y'all pick LeBron James, LeBron James Jr. Uh, with your top pick uh, in the NBA draft? Should you pass on him? What do y'all think? Let us know in the comments and we'll get back to you.